Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Parker Office Hours, December 1st, so 2022. I think we might have one more in two weeks, and then that's it for this year. Crazy. Um, as always, be excellent to each other. Although we aren't a CNCF project, we tend to follow the CNCF code of conduct. So yeah, that applies. Um, today, we have very few things on the agenda. So we'll have lots of time for Q&A afterwards, I think. But first of all, we have some new releases of the Parker agent. Um, and then we have some improvements to show for Parker itself that haven't been haven't been released yet, but they will land and be quite the improvements, I think. So first of all, let's talk about the Parker agent. I guess, Frederick, if you want to take part of that, then I'll talk about the other stuff. Yeah, we, we, we've talked about these changes uh, for some time now, so I won't dive into too much depth. Um, and I think literally everyone in this call <laughs> um, has contributed to the V010 um, release, which is super cool. Um, but I, I'll re reiterate um, a little bit for the for the recording, um, anyone who may be watching the recording. So we finally released um, two very significant uh, features with uh, V010. Um, the first one is stack unwinding using Dwarf. Um, so now we can walk stacks that don't necessarily have frame pointers that has been in the making for, I, I think the, the idea kind of originated almost a, to one year ago. Uh, so it's super cool to finally um, have this feature. It is still an experimental stage. Um, that's because you know it, we're, it's a huge, huge, huge feature. Um, and we already know about some architectural changes that are going to happen so that we can enable this feature um, by default. Um, yeah, so this means that we can now profile things like Nginx or Red Panda or Postgres or MySQL. Um, you know, before we basically were able to profile Go programs or if you very specifically enabled some flags in your compiler. Um, so yeah. So we um, wrote a couple as as like polar signals. We wrote a couple of blog posts. I'll just link those in the um, chat, um, and we can put them in the um, meeting notes as well. Uh, which one did I just post? The announcement, I believe. And then here's the deep dive. Um, where did I leave off? Um, Yeah. Anyways, so we um, yeah we we released uh, we released this and talked about this um, on on the blog if people are interested in all the details. But yeah, um, this is a super super important feature. Another kind of uh, um, this was kind of incidental that it uh, overlapped with the dwarf unwinding is uh, we released actual system wide profiling now. So instead of First, discovering which processes we want to um, profile and then attaching a debugger to that. We're now kind of profiling the whole machine um, and then um, attaching metadata to processes instead. So it's kind of turned around. Um, and then there, there are lots and lots of other smaller features. I know that uh, Maxime, for example, who's on the call, um, implemented relabeling support, which is really amazing. So now you can not only um, kind of get all of this metadata, but you can also drop labels or add labels um, as you as you need and want. So really, really cool um, release. And actually, just today uh, we also released v010.1, um, which essentially fixes a bunch of bugs uh, based on reports that we've gotten. Um, we saw some significantly larger unwind tables than we thought we would see. Uh, so we doubled the size um, that we're allowing. Um, yeah, and very various other um, improvements. Let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, specifically, um, there was one big improvement regarding um, the kind of memory that the amount of memory that we're locking for eBPF to be able to use. I think that's it.
Any questions? Actually, since Julian is also on the call, your changes about uh, kind of improving the uploads of debug infos is finally released now. In case you, in case you didn't know already, <laughs> this is actually I just today I I had a case where um, there was a there was a, a corrupt upload and it was retried uh, a few minutes later thanks to this feature. So really really awesome. Yeah, I, I, I think we're reaching the issue right now in our well, stage deployment, so yeah, I need to update. All right. So what's next? What's next for the, the park agents now that we have stuck unwinding? So at least, I, I mean, I can talk about this from, uh, from Polar Signals. Um, Kind of priority wise, um, we're gonna in, in the Parker agent we're gonna be looking at expanding language support, and the highest uh, priority for us there is Java support. And after that will be Python. After that we'll need to see. <laughs> we are far from done, basically. I remember that we had a, a conversation a while ago about um, having access to um, some data that were coming in some of the, the function. One of them, I'm thinking about it, the trace ID, when you're doing trace ID. Is that something we can build now that we have the full stack? And why I think I would be now? more comfortable talking about that if some of the agent folks were here. Okay. I do think we have ideas of how this can work. Um, basically, you know, if we see that there is a context in the function, um, like on the stack, um, we can try to resolve that and try to read the trace ID. So I, I think this should work, but <laughs> I think it takes uh, those folks to be on the call to, um, to 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 also think about this some more. Generally speaking, I do think this is possible, but it does take it'll take some work to do. Sweet. All right. Nice good question. Um, let's talk about Parker itself. So I guess given that we had a rather big release um, that we also released like two weeks ago or something like that, we can still recap the zero uh, fourteen release still. So I think most importantly, we improved the APIs to uh, not reuse uh, or resend like the same <laughs> strings hundreds of times, like literally. Um, we are sending a table of, of each string. So every string only gets, gets sent once, and then we reference the strings. And that massively improved the, the response sizes of flame graphs and uh, also the latency Overall, we've seen drop uh, a bit as well. Um, and then we uh, improved the auto completion um, or uh, with like a new parser built on top of nearly JS. And uh, I think we'll, we'll look into improvements for that uh, just in a bit. Uh, we also um, actually improved the call graph visualization even further. and. Also, I think a pretty cool feature uh, landed in Parker recently, which I can quickly show. Um, so yeah, these were like the biggest changes in Parker 014, and we've been working on a few things since uh, since then. So let me pull up a Parker server that is running on demo.parker.dev. Always available. I think this is from today from like literally like two hours ago or something, because Frederick and I have been <laughs> working on, on stuff. So it's like basically the current main version. And um, what can we look into? We can uh, look at the, yeah, as I said, the call graph API, uh, call graph improvements. They were kind of hidden behind feature flags that were like hard to find because you needed to like paste a URL, et cetera. So now you can enable um, these feature uh, features that are still experimental in this UI, and then close it out and um, 
yeah, start uh, using these experimental features. Obviously, they are experimental, so they might be breaking. Um, but yeah, overall, um, you can you can enable these and and disable them and and give feedback more easily. Um, yes, call graphs are still broken, but the filtering, for example, that works. So we can uh, let's find something. I guess there should be an ingest here, and now we can actually search for in a for stack traces within uh, on, that only contain the stack uh, the word ingest or uh, upper or lower of of those stack traces. So we can like fil uh, filter on the server side, and now we can still still uh, highlight them. Uh, on the UI here with the other search kind of broken because it's so small, uh, so big. Um, but yeah, so these are experimental features. You can enable this over here now, which is pretty helpful. Then um, the UI has been, been improved uh, as well. So this was previously one input field. This has become a text um, text area now. And in the future, this will allow us to um, like write bigger queries or like multiple lines uh, of inputs here, um, and yeah, for now you can you can still write everything like normal. Um, you can put these in. I think what actually has been fixed is that you now can concatenate different labels, which was always kind of annoying to me actually. <laughs> so selecting another label, uh, we now concat concatenate these labels uh, in the UI here which uh, I've already, since this was fixed, done multiple times. And yeah, you can still go back to, to all of these things and like add track X matters or like uh, yeah, negate them, uh, things like that. So I think that's that's a huge improvement there. Um, and yeah, let us know how you like that. Um, it also still, it still does like the auto completion. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then just, Earlier this week, we kind of started going down a rabbit hole of improving ingestion. And I quickly want to talk about this, but probably will be in, in the next release and, and we'll highlight this and mention it there uh, again. Um, so what we've previously done, maybe for the people who know about um, like the columnar store in FrostDB, um, uh, we, we kind of like took every Every profile uh, request has mul might have multiple series, um, and what what that basically means is that if you look at at, at the data in in this, imagine like slicing through one timestamp, and you see like for example here like um, I don't know like fifty series um, for one timestamp. And what we've done previously was we created one parquet buffer per. Um, Per series, so we ended up with like multiple, like fifty or hundred buffers uh, internally um, in in memory, and then we started persisting them. And now what we do, we kind of like create one big buffer. We write to that big buffer all the samples of all the series at once, and then we persist this. So overall, I think um, probably easiest to show this um, is in the um, in the latency of writing upload upload where is it in here so the latency uh, has has decreased quite quite a bit um, of writing profiles now um, and that that is on demo um, so we can see that like the p90 has dropped from like 400 around 400 milliseconds down to below 100 milliseconds um, and the cool thing about this change if it was for ingesting the data on its own and being more um, performant for ingesting data would be great, but um, we can actually drill into the latency of, for example, the query latency. So this is for like um, querying individual profiles or merges, etc. Um, so you can see we had like spikes here and there, and this has been been flattened quite a bit as well. Um, maybe we can find some some other examples where it's more obvious. I think I looked at profile types. So this is like the profile types dropdown, um, the API call for that. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's not too obvious right now from this. Let's see. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess, I guess it's like there's something here, but I think overall, like the right, right improvements here are the biggest. Uh, we had some similar uh, experiences on, on Polar Signals Cloud, and that's where like query Im uh, improvements were the highest, but obviously it also had significant inputs on or improvements on, on Parker itself. And there were like some benchmarks, which like we can, we, we could get into, but yeah, TLDR is like we, like the, um, ingestion path of Parker um, decreased by like 90%. Um, so like we only take like 10% of CPU and memory, what we used to, to need before, just because we are not doing so much work with a bunch of overhead anymore, being kind of smart about this. Um, yes. And, and the reason why this now showed so much is because with the system-wide profiling, we are sending so many sometimes hundreds of super, super small um, profiles um, because like every single process creates a profile. They might be really, really small compared to a PPROF profile um, that you get from like the Go runtime, for example. But we had like so many um, series in each request that we now uh, ended up really having kind of like right amplification uh, show up quite significantly. And yeah, that was fixed. So. Yeah, I think that is kind of it for Parker improvements, but those um, are going to be in the next release. I guess we'll do one, I suppose, like next week or the week after. So for the last office hours of the year, we should have another release, 0.15. Um, and and that, that might actually make a difference for people out there as well um, in the overall CPU usage. Um, other than that, one thing I want to highlight and point out is that we now have, we as a community, I'm saying, have Grafana 9.3 released. And that is actually a released version of Grafana that now uh, contains Parker as a data source um, within, within Grafana Core. So you can set up a Grafana instance you can enable the flame graph features and then point point that Grafana instance to a Parka uh, Parka server, and the Parka server will then uh, answer those requests coming from a Grafana instance. Uh, we have a blog post explaining how to set things up. Um, you can find that on Polar Signals blog for more information if you want to set this up on your own. I put it in the in the docs. And the and the notes. I think that's it. Any questions or anything I missed, Frederick? Tamara? Anything? Do we have um? Do we have the new Grafana instance set up with Explorer yet? Yeah, so I actually looked into this, and the way we, I can just pull it up, I guess. Um, we, we have the demo on demo.parka.dev slash Grafana. We are running running this, and I mean, the short answer is no. Um, but we, we are running a Grafana instance where um, our plugin um, of, of for Parka has been installed, and, and you can can use that, and you can you can see um, kind of actually dashboard panels with flame graphs. The problem I think is that um, in this instance of Grafana, and I think if it, this wasn't yeah this wasn't um, um, reverted, this is already running nine point three, although it's still the better. Um, so I I tried to deploy it. The problem is that we are using um, anonymous anonymous authentication. And it seems as if in that case, they don't surface the Explore UI. So for our demo cluster, <laughs> we, we, we aren't able to get the, the Explore. And then uh, we can't show, show the Parker integration um, that's in Grafana Core with the Explore UI. So okay. maybe there's a- the Grafana people if there's maybe a flag for this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's something I, I googled. I couldn't quickly find something, so we we should ask. Yeah, that's odd because last time I used Grafana in Anonymous, uh, the explore button. 
like I was right. like that in my last company, we were using the the, the proxy, the old proxy authentication we were with anonymous and we always had the, oh, I don't know. So that was, last time was Grafana 8. Right, yeah. I mean, we can quickly pull it up. Um, I don't I don't think I've actually disabled like anything in, in that regard. Um, it really, um, yeah. Yeah, we, we have our demo configuration files open source as well now. Um, yeah, and we, we are running like um, no ba basic authentication and auth is anonymous. And I don't, yeah, again, looking at this, I don't see anything where we disabled um, the Explore UI. So yeah, we'll, we'll need to talk to them. But yeah, other, other than that, I think we, kind of have everything in place. We would need to update the data source for adding the in, uh, like the core Parker data source uh, for Grafana. And then we should be able to, to have people query Parker through that um, demo instance as well. Oh, yeah. Somewhere here should be explored. <laughs> Again, maybe I missed some some configuration flag or something. Like if people find something, please let us know. Feel free to send a PR or whatever. I have a good job. All right. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, you were kind of cut off. I'll see if I can find the sitting. Yeah, if you want to. I, I take a look again as well, but yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else? I guess not. Then again, we'll have another Parker office hours in two weeks. Exactly. Yep. December 15th, um, and <laughs> maybe we have 015 available for that date. <laughs> Just coincidentally, kind of funny. Um, but yeah, and then if you have any questions until then, let us know in, in Discord, Twitter, Mastodon, anywhere. Um, or we'll write on, on issues and, and other ways on the internet, I guess. But yeah. Let us know if there's anything. Otherwise, see you in two weeks. Bye-bye, everybody. See ya.